Hey guys, what's up? This is Matthew Davis, me once again. Welcome back to another movie review. Um, it's Valentine's Day, and I don't usually make vi videos to celebrate Valentine's Day, but I figured since I saw a re-release of this movie for its 25th anniversary, I felt like uh, I should probably review it for Valentine's Day, even though uh, this is a movie that I have reviewed before. But when I did my Halloween uh, thing, uh, there was a lot of movies that I did reviews for. I did do... Bottom line, um, this is going to be my review for uh, Titanic. I saw the 3D re-release, uh, and it wasn't the first time it was released in 3D. It was released in 3D back in 2012, though I didn't watch this movie until like 2014, I believe. And uh, this is remastered now in 4K, so hopefully we'll be getting a 4K release. Though, when I saw the 3D re-release of this a couple days ago, the 3D did not look good. I think it was just due to the fact that when the 3D started, it was like inside out 3D. And no, I'm not talking about like the movie. Basically, it's like if you took a bowl, like, like a, a, it's supposed to be like a sphere and the sphere was like inside out. And then uh, when it, when it switched, it just looked like the red and blue type of 3D just without the color. So I'm going to see it again for Valentine's Day. So yeah, it might be a long movie, but Watching this movie again, it really doesn't feel like three hours. In fact, I have two versions. I got the standard edition and I got the 3D edition. Though I don't really uh, use my Blu-ray 3D that much anymore. Just for the fact that uh, Blu-ray 3D kind of bombed. But yeah. Anyways, if you haven't heard the story of Titanic, which you should have. Uh, whether if it's the movie or, of course, the history with the Titanic. This is based off the historical events of the Titanic that happened in 1912. Though this isn't like entirely accurate to that story. No, James Cameron is going for more of a romance to this whole Titanic thing rather than uh, just it being a historical event type of movie. Because it's more of James Cameron's reimagining of that just uh, with a romance uh, mixed in as it follows uh, Rose as she tells the backstory of what happened 84 years ago from 1996 all the way back to 1912 with how the Titanic set sail and it was a beautiful ship. It was the ship of dreams and from there she is marrying a man who she doesn't really love that much. So she meets a guy played by Leonardo DiCaprio called Jack and of course they develop a romance. It was pretty much love at first sight after Jack saved Rose from almost committing suicide and from there they just they develop a really strong romance for like a couple days until of course the Titanic sinks and of course over 2,000 people are on the ship and of course they have to get off now including Rose and Jack as they help each other get off the ship as they want to have a happy life together but of course that's not really the case when the ship is sinking as it crashes into an iceberg and it sinks for like two and a half hours so it's a very tragic yet very accurate thing like I said, this is a retelling of the historical events just with different characters as it's far more different. As with James Cameron's version, it's actually, there are two types of ways you could look at it. A romance story and a disaster type movie, kind of like uh, what Roland Emmerich uh, likes to do. But really, it's one of the more accurate disaster movies out there. Like, I enjoy it a lot more than almost any Roland Emmerich film, in my opinion. Probably just due to the fact that the disaster in here is far more terrifying because it actually did happen. And the way James Cameron handles it is quite tense. And the look, like, this was 1997. Like, the way they set this whole thing up, it looks outstanding. Even to this day, I feel like it's held up very well. And of course, with uh, Rose and Jack's romance story, I feel like it's very iconic. It gives us some of the most uh, emotional scenes in uh, romance movie history. And while it's not a very long romance story, it's one that I found to be very strong. In fact, I think it's one of the best that uh, cinema has to offer. And the way James Cameron handles it, it's beautiful, okay? Like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, I feel like have great chemistry together. Even though they just met, I feel like immediately I enjoyed these couples' romance. And the fact that it was short-lived is honestly quite tragic because they were planning on going on a happy life after this, the Titanic was apparently supposed to go to another area. Of course, we don't know what that area is. All that we know is that it was sailing. And, uh, like, the movie plays in two halves. Like, there's the romance half, and then once it hits, like, 50% of the movie, that's when all hell breaks loose. When that iceberg hits, 
you know exactly what's going to happen. People are scared, and it would be a very terrifying thing. So I could imagine after people saw this movie, they would just, like, not want to go on a cruise ship anymore. I've never been on a cruise ship, and after watching this movie multiple times, I probably never will. Because while a lot of people could swim in the movie, they could not survive uh, hypothermia because, of course, they were in a very Arctic-like place when the ship sank. I mean, there was an iceberg, but yeah. Now, when it comes to performances, like I mentioned before, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio are excellent in this movie. I don't understand why Leo didn't get an Oscar win until 2015 because I feel like he really or deserved an Oscar for this role, as I feel like it's one of his most iconic, and it makes his death all the more tragic. Though, probably the most nitpicky thing, and probably the biggest thing that I think most of us can agree on, is while his death is tragic, we he honestly could have survived, as uh, Rose is lying there on the door while Leo is just freezing to death in the water. I think it was painfully obvious that the door was big enough for two people, so, yeah, all Rose had to do was share, and, uh, yeah, they could have lived a happy life. So, yeah, whether or not uh, you agree with that, uh, it still was a tragic death, but it could have been much more tragic if there really was no way Leo could have survived. But even James Cameron admitted that he could have survived it, but it really didn't ruin anything. I mean, it's an iconic death scene. In fact, there are so many iconic moments that I feel like, to this day, are still worth recreating. I mean... Uh, I'm the king of the world, and the scene where Leo uh, is making Kate look like uh, she's flying. Like, there's just so much. And, of course, Draw Me Like One of Your French Girls. Like, it's one of the most iconic romance stories that uh, people tend to hate on, which I can kind of understand why, because, uh, well, it's a movie that was so popular that it tends to get negative feedback from audiences later down the line. But to me, I feel like it still holds up. I feel like with this movie and Avatar, people just love to hate on them. As for me, I feel like, you know, James Cameron really struck gold with this. I mean, this movie won 11 Academy Awards. And before Avatar, this became his highest grossing film ever. And that was way before Avatar. And uh, if there was one thing uh, that you should know about James Cameron is he's big into two things. Special effects and really long movies. As this movie, like I mentioned before, is over three hours long, but it really never felt that way. I just loved what was going on uh, with the actors and the storyline, that it really never felt that way. And the gorgeous cinematography, it is all beautiful. You could definitely see how it won multiple Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Like, it never felt slow. Like, when it does start, like, if it's starting to feel slow, it immediately picks back up. As long as you're engaged with the storyline and the romance, then the movie's going to fly by super fast. As I've watched this movie multiple times, and I am going to see it again, it really doesn't feel like a three-hour movie, in my opinion. It's amazing how James Cameron has managed to make uh, all different types of blockbusters that not only made a lot of money, but uh, made a lot of money for a reason. I mean, throughout the years, I think he's been expanding his filmography, not just with special effects, but storylines, even though Avatar, the movies don't really have the best storylines. I feel like storylines here is better just for the fact that it's based, sort of based on historical events. But, but sure, the couple thing is fictional, but the sinking of the Titanic actually did happen, but... Yeah, in the end, guys, I still really enjoy Titanic to this day. It's a great romance and disaster story mixed into one. First half, romance. Second half, living hell. And when it comes to James Cameron's terrific direction and the terrific acting and the uh, visual effects, like, it really looks like that the ship is real. In fact, it might have been on a real ship. I don't know. I didn't look at the filmography behind the movie, but uh, I do know one thing that... It holds up to this day. Like, it was all done beautifully, and the tragicness that happens throughout this movie really makes me feel sorry for all the people that were on the ship. And it's one of the most tragic movies out there. Like, probably one of the hardest romance movies to watch. I mean, I've watched it multiple times, and I, I also can't go without saying the score. It is outstanding, it is beautiful. And of course, Celine Dion's iconic song, My Heart Will Go On. It's a romance movie that I enjoy watching to this day. Probably not as uh, memorable as something like Casablanca or Gone with the Wind. But I can definitely say it's up there with uh, those films. 
And yeah, it's not Cameron's best film, but it is one of his most iconic films. It's hard to believe that he went from directing a crap sequel, Piranha 2, and just managed to strike gold throughout the years. And he already made Avatar 2, so chances are he he's back. And uh, he was big back then, and he's still big now. So yeah, I can definitely say this is still worth a watch if you haven't seen the film before. But I don't know. Some people are divided on it. I, for one, think it's a great film. And I still enjoy watching it once in a while, though... Like I mentioned before, I'm not. It's not really worth rewatching if you like depressing stories because it is. It's a tragic one. It's a depressing one, but it's a very beautiful one at the same time. Even though it's mostly tragic, it's by far one of the most accurate disaster films. But combining it with romance, it made it all the more engaging. And I think James Cameron, still to this day, should be proud with this film that he's made. Yeah, you could still complain that uh, Leo really could have survived the movie, but some people still have problems with it. I mean, I do have a couple, like uh, uh, the fiancé, the male fiancé in the movie, like uh, he's supposed to be the bad guy, but, uh, well, you don't see him on screen that much, so, yeah. Yeah, but anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have a good Valentine's Day. I'm not really doing much for Valentine's Day, except for seeing Titanic again. Just so I can see if the 3D is better, and I, I checked it before, and yeah, it is better. I just want to watch the entire thing before, <laughs> yeah, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Word out.